Life is full of qualifications. We get qualified to do different things at different stages in life. When we're in primary and high school, the exam council qualifies us to move from one level to the other, from primary into high school. Same council determines whether we qualify to get into university. Once we get into university and we want to specialize in different things, then the university will qualify us to graduate from there and therefore get into our line of career in accordance with the qualifications that we have earned. And it's pretty much the same when we look at other things. In sports, there are certain bodies in the sports, in the sports um, field that um, qualify us to participate in those sports and also qualify us to achieve in that area. It's not very different when it comes to spiritual things. And spiritual things, as we see in today's passage, Colossians chapter 1, verses 9 to 12, in spiritual things, it is Christ who qualifies us. Let's read together these few verses. For this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you. We continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives, so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience and giving joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. So a couple of things that we're going to share from this. The first thing we pick up from the first portion of verse 9, frequent prayers. For this reason, when Paul and Timothy say this, they're saying that they have committed themselves to continually pray for the believers in Colossae. Why? Because they had heard about their faith and the love that they have shown, as we learned from the earlier portions of this chapter. This faith and love motivated Paul and Timothy to begin and to continue to pray for the believers in the Colossian church. And as scholars would describe, the word that they use here for prayer is not about a one-way direction prayer, but a dialogue with God. A dynamic two-way communication where we are hearing from God as well as speaking to God. Hearing from God in order that we may discern what God's will for us and for others is. Interestingly, Paul and Timothy prayed the same thing for these believers over and over again. Why do I say this is interesting? Because today many Christians, many believers believe that unless prayer is spontaneous and unplanned, then it's not powerful and it's not spirit-led. And yet that's not what we see in this example. We find that unlike what people think that these unplanned prayers, these spontaneous prayers are more powerful, more spiritual. What we see is that these written, planned prayers that are repeated over and over again are what Paul and, and Timothy are referring to. And these are powerful prayers. Think about it from the perspective of prayers in the Bible like the Psalms. These are written and we repeat them over and over again with a lot of conviction. Same kind of idea. Think about the songs that we sing, the prayer songs that we sing. They're written and we sing them over and over and over again as our prayers. And so it's the same kind of thing. Just because something is written and just because something is planned doesn't make it less spiritual or less powerful. Paul and Timothy planned to pray over and over again the same thing as we see in the next part, focused prayers, that over and over again, they were praying the same thing. 
Verse 12 seems like it's a continuation of what Paul and Timothy began in verse 9. And so had they finished that sentence, probably this is how it would have read. For this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you and giving joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. Paul and Timothy were full of joy and grateful to the Father because through salvation, he had officially stated, he had officially qualified the believers in Colossae to be able to receive the eternal benefits of belonging to his kingdom. God had certified them as part of his kingdom. We then need to ask, what was this that was so important that Paul and Timothy had to repeat it over and over again in their dialogue with the Father? Paul and Timothy's frequent dialogue with the Father and their thanksgiving was focused on specific things that they desired for the benefit of this church. Things that they had already seen in their dialogue with God. These believers were already faithful. They were already loving. They were already part of the kingdom of God through salvation. Now, if we keep in mind the aspect of dialogue, then what we are saying is that through prayer, Paul and Timothy discerned what pleases God and what he desires for this church. And so as they dialogued with God, they found out what would please him in the lives of the believers of Colossae. And through this dialogue, Paul and Timothy ended up with what we can call a shared desire for this church. A shared desire that we can group in three sections as follows. The first thing, that they would fully know what God wants for their benefit as they apply the wisdom and understanding that are available to them from the Holy Spirit. If we were to say it differently, the believers in Colossae can receive from the Holy Spirit the wisdom and understanding that they need in order to fully know what God wants for their benefit. And so this prayer, this dialogue with God by Timothy and Paul is that the believers in Colossae would depend on the Holy Spirit in order that they may receive wisdom and understanding that results in them knowing what God's will is. Secondly, knowing God's will would enable these believers to please God through every aspect of their lives. In other words, they would be able to choose to ensure that their lives honor and revere the Lord Jesus. How do they do this? By making sure that their lives produce evidence that they honor him, evidence that they belong to him, evidence that they are pleasing to him, evidence that they revere him, bearing fruit in everything they say and in everything that they do because they know God. Thirdly, that by his great power, God would strengthen these believers in Colossae so that they would have great endurance and patience. This ability to patiently endure is so necessary in a world that is hostile to the church, hostile to the things of Christ. And so God's power would enable these believers to patiently endure. And this was the desire, the shared desire that Paul and Timothy had with God as they dialogued with him. How then do we apply that to ourselves today? This example encourages us that this kind of dialogue is what our prayers should be about. That it's not just one traffic request asking for stuff from God, but hearing from him, finding out what is pleasing to him, knowing what his will is for us and for his people, the church. And so praying for that will to come to pass in the lives of the believers among us of whom we are part. And so if this is not just for pastors and church leaders, this kind of dialogue with God is for all of us. The example 
of Paul and Timothy encourages us to engage in such dialogue, but in a focused way, in a planned way, with a specific request that we keep desiring that God's people would be seen as God's people through their lives, through what they say, through what they do, in honor, in reverence, and in a desire to please God for the benefit of fellow believers. And so for us to know him, for us to know his will, for us to have that patient endurance that we need in this hostile world, then you and I have that available to us through the Holy Spirit. And we engage with him as we have dialogue with God. Question that may arise, how do I hear God? He has given us his word and his word is the sword of the Holy Spirit. So as we read God's word in prayer, as we engage with God, we go before him, not just to say stuff to him, but to hear from him as he brings his word to life in our hearts. The Holy Spirit enables us to hear the voice of God through the word of God, even as we speak to him in prayer. May the Lord bless you and may this be our shared desire for us as believers in Christ Jesus. The Lord bless you.